So the second time I had attempted Britannomyces was actually to add the Britannomyces culture at the end of fermentation, so the beginning, to where I wasn't actually going to rely on the Britannomyces for the fermentation of the sugars, but I was going to introduce it to the wine when it was done so that the Britannomyces would actually just go through the normal process that we tend to see in red wines, where by it breaks down carbon sources uh, alternative to sugar to stay alive. And in the process of doing that creates a lot of these more kind of sometimes spicy, cinnamon, clovey, even floral qualities uh, to maybe even just the, the, the lesser, maybe lesser desirable kind of barnyard qualities or medicinal qualities or something like that. And I ended up coming to the conclusion that that's for me, based on Pinot Gris, actually, which is what I'm trying to do it with, I think is, uh, is the better option because the fermentation ends up being in a, in a more uh, acceptable range of time. Uh, and because you're not fermenting it, I'm not nearly as nervous about adding it to a barrel a month or two months or whatever it is before I bottle it. So it's not, you know, it's not quite as... Uh, prolific, I guess you could say, in the winery. Um, and it was, uh, it worked really, really well. I had fermented the Pinot Gris on the skins so that I would actually have enough phenolics uh, from, from the skins, which is basically the key carbon source for, for the Britannomyces, and also aged it in some wood that wasn't totally like neutral. It was, uh, I think, two years old. So there were some tannin and some other compounds in the wood the Britannomyces could feed on. So I was trying to give it everything that I knew from a sort of a text point perspective, or textbook perspective, um, to give it all the different nutrients and the, and the sources that it needed that we, that we understand uh, it, it to sort of want uh, to, to, to thrive in red wine, which is the main reason why we really never see Britannomyces in white wine is because usually white wine is just gently pressed and the juice is fermented and even if it's fermented in wood there isn't enough uh, phenolic load there for, for the Britannomyces to have carbon to feed on. And, uh, and I thought it worked pretty well, although I'm still nervous about introducing the culture into the winery in any kind of large way. So that being said, the third time I did it, <laughs> I just added the culture right before bottling. So, and I went to bottle unfiltered. So the idea there is that I'm putting into a, a, a tank where the tank I know I can control, it's, it's closed. Um, and I can add it right before I'm bottling and then I bottle unfiltered and it goes to bottle and then I can sterilize that tank after and I'm not too worried about there being a high population of it inside of the cellar. And that just means that at some point, hopefully in the bottle, it'll develop its complexities opposed to developing its complexities earlier on and then being bottled and, and, you know, and sort of having it in the product kind of immediately upon release, if that makes sense. So it's a bit of a time bomb, and I just, I just released it to the market for the first time, and uh, I'm going to kind of wait for the emails and phone calls to come in and, and see if people, you know, see what people think.